First Chronicles chapter 17. Now we dealt with verses 1 through 6. David, he's in his castle amongst cedars. He looks out to this tent. And David's not content where the Lord is. And he got in his heart, because he loves the Lord, God deserves better. And Nathan, you know, says, do what you will. Then God came to Nathan that night and said, no, you're not going to build me a house. You can't. And verse 7 is where we pick up. And we've got God's answer to David, which we will call, it's called the Davidic Covenant. And what we're going to read is a promise to David because of his heart. Forever, all the kings are going to be of David. Now, the king that was before him, King Saul, was of Benjamin. David is of the line of Judah. And the heart of David, I got to say the heart because this is what it is. Why did God allow David commit adultery and murder? Because his heart, and we see both Psalms of the repentance of David's heart, and God's going to give David hit the throne in which will be seated Jesus Christ in the millennium, in Jerusalem. And that throne will continue forever in the new earth. And Jeremiah will write, Oh, earth, 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 write this man, uh, uh, Zedekiah, or excuse me, Kaniah. His name is Jekiah, but God removes the, Je, the Jehovah of Kaniah, and he says, that's it, I am done with this line. And you say, well, how can God make this promise to David when in Jeremiah's time, the last king, Kaniah, when that, no other kings will ever sit on that throne? You are looking now at verse 7, the virgin birth. And when we open up the book of Matthew, when we open up the Gospel of Luke, we will see that the adopted father of Jesus runs this line of David and all the kings. And the legalness of the adoption of Joseph to Jesus Christ will give Jesus Christ the legal rights of David's throne, even though Jeremiah writes, write this man childless, no more to be on that throne. And the prophecies are in the, in the Bible is before this child, Jesus, the land is going to be forsaken of her king. And yet we're going to read right now, David is going to be promised by God forever his throne to be established. Now, there can be a space in there. And then when we pick up Mary, Mary's genealogy, she runs David, but she don't run Solomon. She runs Nathan. And, well, look at the prophet's name, verse 3. Nathan. I'm not 3. Verse 2. Nathan. Now, I'm not going to say, I don't know if this is why David named that boy Nathan. Mary's genealogy of David is the virgin birth goes from Nathan, not Solomon. So, verse 7. Now, therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, God speaking, to Nathan. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, all the heavens, of all the angels, everything. I took thee from a sheep, a sheep goat, and that's uh, where sheep dwell. David was a shepherd, even from following the sheep. And thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And when you come across John chapter 10, Jesus says, I'm the great shepherd. And the sheep are Israel. And there are other sheep, which will be the Gentiles later. So the analogy of the sheep is the people under God and the most stupidest animal God could get is the sheep. Because we're stupid. We're dumb. We need someone to lead us. So an unsaved man, when he goes, oh, I could do it my own way. You're not even a sheep. You're a goat. All you do is butt God. So he picked a man to be in the line of Jesus Christ, a shepherd. And I have been with thee whatsoever thou hast walked. That's great. Never leave thee or forsake thee. And I've cut off thy enemies from before thee. He's in peace right now. Man, he's had a terrible amount of enemies. He had King Saul as an enemy. He had the Philistines as enemies. 
He would have all these groups of people as enemies. At one time, his own troops become enemies at Ziglag. When all his family has been taken. And I have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. David's a well-known name today. He's in the history books. He's in the movies. They even made a movie about Bathsheba and David. So David's well known. I bet you David would be a name, and I don't know for sure, but I bet David would be a name that most Jewish uh, people would, would call their sons David. I would assume. That and Abraham. Or Moses. Also, I will ordain a place, appoint a place for my people Israel. Now, throughout the law, God says, there'll be a place where I'll settle my name. And God is affirming this to David. It's going to be now Jerusalem, where David is. Zion, the city of David. And I will plant them. I will plant them. Well, let's run over to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Let's see what he plants. And you'll see this also, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Now I will sing to my beloved, a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard. God has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered it, the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made the wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. Here's a vineyard that God has planted. The vineyard is the children of Israel. It is shepherds going over this vineyard. Matthew 21, 33. So sheep are likened to sheep. They're likened to a vine. Matthew 21, verse 33. And this is Jesus speaking. It would be a red letters in your Bible. Mine, I got my own highlight, a pink. And Jesus says, here another parable. There was a certain householder, that would be God, which planted a vineyard, Isaiah 5, 1, and hedged it about with a rock, digged a wine press in it, and built a tower, and left it out to husbandmen, that would be the children of Israel. And went out to a far country. Now these husbandmen would be the ones that would betray Jesus, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. Because you read the rest of it, you know, he sent uh, laborers, the prophets, and they killed the prophets. They stoned the prophets, sent them away empty. And then at last he sent his son, Jesus Christ, and they crucified him. And I'll read you to read it yourself, but look at verse 46 of Matthew. And when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Oh, wait a minute. That's not. Verse 45, excuse me. Verse 45. And when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he spank of them. He did. The husbandmen. In the vineyard of Israel being in charge. That's the original job of Adam. Take care of the garden. And to sin came in. So when you see God speaking about this planting in First Chronicles 17, it's Israel. And when you plant the ground, it grows roots. It's supposed to be fruitful. And when Jesus came, it wasn't fruitful. And they shall dwell in their place. That's not today. I mean, they're living there, but Jews are all over the world. It shall be moved no more. The United Nations are moving them right now. The United States and nations are moving them around. Give a little land to the PLO, please. 
Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them anymore. Uh, they're launching missiles right now, and they're launching I, I, what I assume is rockets with rocks in them. Or they're shooting rocks right now, today. As of I read yesterday in the news. Oh yeah, not the fake news, not the newspaper news, not the television news. I had to get it from missionaries that are living over there and doing the work over there. As at the beginning, well, Jacob was always bothered by his brother. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, those God says, my people Israel, they're his people. Moreover, I will subdue all thy enemies. That has not happened yet. This is prophecy to David, and it's yet still prophecy. That is going to happen, verse 9 and 10, when Jesus Christ sits on the throne. And all the goat nations will be gone. And there'll still be enemies of God at the end of the millennium, when Satan will gather a multitude for war. And since the time I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thy enemies. Look, look at that. How can you say that God's all finished with them? Furthermore, I will tell thee that the Lord will build thee a house. All right? Well, that is sure not God's going to come down with a hammer, nails, and a saw, and a skill saw, and buy lumber at, at the hardware store. There is the word there, house, that you see not as a building, like people think church is, but that's a group of people. It's not called church. It's not called, I will build thee a building. David's already in a castle. It's his family. And you know how many, I would not know how many children are off the offspring of David. Just Solomon alone. But I know Jesus Christ is. And Isaiah 53 speaks about those who believe on Jesus. We are Jesus' seed. So we come from the line of David through Jesus Christ by the new birth. Isn't that interesting? And it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, you're going to die, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, death, uh, also uh, Abraham's bosom, that I will raise the, up thy seed after thee. Solomon, which shall be of thy sons, Solomon. I will establish his kingdom, Solomon. He shall build me a house. There's the temple. There's nails, bricks, stone. And I will establish his throne forever, like your throne, David. There is no throne in Israel today. But there will be. I will be his father. Look at that. That's one of the rare cases in the Old Testament. You see God saying, I'm the father. And he's saying it to Solomon. And he shall be my son. Look at that. Solomon is us, a son of God. When Solomon committed all those sins against God with all those wives... And go into Egypt for horses, which the law said not to do. And multiply gold, which the law told him not to do. And he went after other gods, which the law told him not to do. Solomon has the eternal security that we have. Because he's the son of God. Now he whips Solomon, Jeroboam, and there was a couple others. That God said to give Solomon a hard time. I will not take my mercy away from him. Now look at that. That's in the Old Testament. David and Solomon knew where they were going to go when they died. For sure. There it is. The mouth of God. As I took it from him, that was before thee. That's King Saul. Saul went into hell. There is no mercy in hell. Look at that. 
the mercy of God is you get to go, well, for them would be Abraham's bosom. And through Christ died, was buried and rose again the third day. But I will settle him my house. Well, house, I, built, I don't think it's a building, I think it's people. And in my kingdom forever, look at that. Solomon has a forever eternal salvation and his kingdom and his throne shall be established forevermore that's not today according to all these words and according to all the vision so did nathan speak to david now let's pick up where i also see second samuel 7. second samuel 7 the counter word chapter and i'll try to read but my voice is going preaching today second uh, Samuel 7 4 Lord will the next night we'll look at David's response you ever want to see a non prideful response it's what David answers it says in 7 4 it shall come to pass that night that the Lord, the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go tell my servant David. Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? That's David's intention. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but has walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wow. God says a tent and a tabernacle is not a house. And when David saw God out there in the tent, he said, hey, that's not good enough. I mean, you really can stretch that tabernacle when you get Baptist tabernacles. <laughs> that's not a house. And all the places where I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I command to feed my people Israel, saying, why build ye not me in a house of cedar. I mean, did God ever say, hey, how come I don't get one? Now, therefore, show thou so say to David, my servant, servant, again, forgive me my voice, ears and voice, I took thee from the sheep coat, and that's the first time that shows up there, sheep coat. The only, the only other places in the Chronicles where he read. And following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people over Israel. And I was with thee, whither so thou went. And I am going to have to stop there. I, my throat is really, today I guess, preaching and dusty at the flea market. I'm going to have to read you, have you read chapter 7, verses 4 to 17 on your own. But it, it's what we read. It's a verily, verily. It's important. So I apologize for my throat, for my voice.